Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore the P450 catalytic cycle. And before we start, I just want to remind you what we saw. If I'm looking at this like this, so here's my, I'm not going to draw the whole protoporphyrin 9, but you have this iron, let me do that in red like I did in the last video. We have this iron, right, that's in its 3 plus initially, and it's, 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 it's chelated in the center of the heme ultimately by these nitrogens, right? Ultimately by these nitrogens, right? And then sort of on the bottom, you had this, this cysteine residue that chelated the, the iron from the bottom. And then on the top, this is where it's exposed in the active site, and this is where oxygen is going to come in. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually look at the mechanism. Before we begin, I just wanted to say that when we say a mechanism, these are just proposed mechanisms. And, and to be honest, you can at this point in, in science, you can never really prove a mechanism. You can only say it fits the data, and I just want to give credit to my inorganic teacher. He's the one that taught me that. You can only say that the mechanism fits the data. And what you'll find is that when you get into really complex reactions, there are sometimes more than one and many proposed mechanisms because we just don't know. Um, but this, there's, there's generally just one proposed mechanism for, um, for the P450 monooxygenations, and that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at a mono, a monooxygenation, okay? And there are several P450s in the steroid synthesis that are monooxygenases. For instance, aldosterone synthase is a monooxygenase. Um, there's certainly 11 hydroxylase, 21 hydroxylase. Um, there are, there are a few monooxygenases in the, in, the, in the sequence. So there are, there are other reactions that P450s do, and then you start to get a little bit more complex, and maybe we'll do a video on those one day. An example of that would be cytochrome P450-1720 lyase, um, which cleaves off the remainder of the alkyl side chain. Um, but essentially, uh, we're just going to look at monooxygenations. And note that I'm just going to draw the iron, but know that all these things are chelating it. They're all chelating the iron, but for now I'm just going to draw the iron. Okay, so we're going to start with iron three plus. And initially, what's hap going to happen is well, the first step is that we're going to have some R group, and typically the, the the oxygenations that occur are on fairly large hydrophobic carbon chains. And so the R just designates the hydro or the, the carbon chain, right? And so the first step is the enzyme is going to bind the carbon chain. So in the case of um, something like a steroid, an example would be um, something like 11-deoxycortisol. Um, 11-deoxycortisol is going to get monooxygenated to um, cortisol, right? Or another one, 11-deoxycorticosterone is going to get oxidized or oxygenated to corticosterone, okay? And then it'll be further ox ox um, oxygenated to aldosterone, okay? So the first thing that happens is the enzyme binds this, the, the carbon chain. The next, and so again, we're just going to be left with the iron. Nothing happens yet. But the next step is going to be an electron transfer. And if we're talking about the cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme, in other words, a mitochondrial P450, the electrons are going to come from adrenodoxin. Um, they're going to come from another car different carriers if, it, if it's a microsomal P450. But ultimately, the electrons are going to pass one at a time. So an electron comes in here, right? And what is that going to do? Well, it's going to ultimately reduce this iron to a 2 plus charge, right? It's going to reduce it to a 2 plus. Now, what I want to do here is I want to try to do this in a, in a way that's, that's fairly understandable because the next step, next couple steps that we're going to see are, are sometimes one of the most misunderstood steps that there are. And I want to do it in a way that, that sort of makes sense. Okay, so let me, let me draw this iron in this way. So we know, uh, it, we know it has a plus two charge, right? It has a two plus charge. Let me just draw some orbitals, right? Just some orbitals around it, you know, just some orbitals and, you know, and so forth. Because obviously the iron's going to have orbitals, right? And in the orbitals are going to be electrons, right? And let's just say, let me just denote, let's say here's an electron, there's an electron, let me draw this electron in blue. There's just electrons, and obviously if it has a 2 plus charge, there's empty orbitals, but essentially there's, there's just electrons there, right? Well, the next step that's going to happen is oxygen is going to come in, 
all right, oxygen is going to come in. And so, so we're going to have oxygen. Actually, do I have room to come over here? Do I have room? Yeah, I got room. Anyway, I'm going to do it like this. Anyways, oxygen is going to come in, right? And you can sort of view what oxygen does as participate in a homolytic bond cleavage. What does that mean? Well, if you remember your organic, right? Let me, let me say this is a yellow electron. Let's say this is a yellow electron. And then let's, let's have, let's have these as orange electrons, right? Let's have these as orange. There's an orange electron. And then let's just have these as purple. The ones that are already there are purple, right? Okay. So there's going to be a homolytic bond cleavage. Let me pick a different, let me pick a color I haven't used. Let's do this dark blue. And what's going to happen is this. So this electron is going to kick up onto here, essentially. And this one's going to kick up onto here. But at the same time, this electron is going to come onto this oxygen. So what ultimately happens in this case? Well, you end up with an iron with a 3+, plus because guess what? It just lost that electron, right? So maybe this maybe this guy still has his red electron, right? So this is red electron. But now you have this oxygen, right? So here's here's this oxygen, right? And here's this electron, here's this electron, do the orange ones, here's this electron, here's this electron, do my other oxygen atom, right? Okay. It's got one, two, three, four. Um, oh, excuse me, let me make a mistake. Mistake. Forgot. Homolytic bond cleavage, right? Okay, now let me do this. Sorry. So it's still got the purple electrons, right? One, two, three, four. And still got these. One, two, three, four, right? But we have that homolytic bond cleavage. So now that that well, this orange electron is now on this guy, and it's a radical. This orange electron went into the other oxygen atom, right? But but the this oxygen right here stole this iron's electron, so this blue electron's right here. Well, if you were to look at the formal charges, what you would find is that the, the right oxygen, the right oxygen is neutral, and this oxygen has a negative one charge. And for the purposes of this video, you could think of the iron like this. It has a three plus charge, and it's interacting with an oxygen like this, so it has a negative charge on that oxygen. So a lot of times what they'll do, and again, it's sort of confusing the way books draw it, but they'll draw it with a covalent bond between iron and oxygen. That's really not the case, right? It's a coordinate covalent bond. Co coordinate covalent bonds are not as strong as covalent bonds, but yet they're stronger than ionic, but it's a coordinate covalent bond. It's a, it is a, an inorganic chemistry type of interaction. It's coordinate covalent. So you could sort of view it like this. So you could sort of view... There's an interaction, a favorable interaction between that oxygen and the iron, right? Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And of course, this oxygen has a radical electron. And what we're going to see in the next step is that in the next step, another electron is going to come in from adrenodoxin or whatever electron carrier there is. Another electron comes in, and that electron specifically is going to go onto this oxygen with the radical. And so what you're going to get is this. You get iron with a 3 plus charge, and you're going to have oxygen, single bond. This oxygen has a negative charge, and if you were to look at it, right, oops, messed up there. So here is a lone pair, there, or there's a lone pair, here's another lone pair. If this guy receives another electron, right, he's going to have a negative charge as well. So now you have this sort of peroxide, but it, it's... But, but it's, it, it has two negative charges, right? And sometimes sometimes they'll abbreviate it like this. They'll put the iron 3 plus with an O2, 2 minus. And that just means that it's this. That The O2, 2 minus is that. And of course, then you also have the favorable interaction between one of the oxygens and the iron 3 plus, right? Okay. So I hope that makes sense, right? And again, sometimes they'll show it like this. Sometimes they'll show it like this. Um, they'll show it with the covalent bond between the two. So it'll be the ion 3 plus. They'll have the oxygen here. And they'll have the oxygen right here with the negative charge. But they'll still put the 2 minus charge, which really just complicates things. So I'm going to erase that. And just, just think about it the way that I initially drew it. Where's my mouse? 
Okay, so just think about it the way that I initially drew it, right? Okay, so think about it as a coordinate covalent bond. You have an electrostatic interaction, it's coordinate covalent, it's weaker than covalent, but stronger than ionic. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is, is the oxygen that's distal from the iron is gonna pick up two protons, right? It's gonna pick up two protons. So two protons are gonna come in, and they're gonna be attached to, they're gonna be attached to this oxygen, right? Assuming that's the one that's distal from the iron. And what's going to happen is you're going to lose water. So essentially what's going to happen is this guy's going to pick up two protons, right? And he's going to you're going to lose the leaving group as water. So that, so it's going to lose the leaving group. But if you think about it like this, right? Think about it like this. Do this in red. This guy had how many electrons, right? It had six electrons there. But if you think, and you might be tempted to say, well, oh, well, these electrons just kick back up onto this oxygen. But no. The electrons were lost to this oxygen right here. So now, unless we can somehow get this oxygen to electrons, it's devoid of an octet. It only has six. It wants eight electrons. So what ends up happening, what ends up happening is this iron donates two of its electrons. So what you end up with is to fill the gap that would normally be right here. So if I lose that water, it ends up being six electrons. It's devoid of an octet. It doesn't like that. It's too unstable. So iron donates two electrons and gets a plus five charge. And so what you end up with is an O2 minus. Just an O2 minus, right? And a lot of times what they'll abbreviate this as, they'll abbreviate it like this. They'll abbreviate iron with a double bond to an oxygen. And for the purposes of now, we're gonna look at it like this because this will make the mechanism make a little bit more sense, okay? But it has a plus five charge, right? It has a plus five charge. And essentially what we're gonna see now, what we're gonna see now is we're gonna see a radical mechanism. So up till now, we've just sort of seen single electron transfers, but now what we're gonna to get to is the radical mechanism, okay? Now keep in mind, Keep in mind that we still have, we still have the RH or the, the carbon chain in the active site, right? So I have this, right? That's in the active site. And essentially this is what's going to happen. This electron is going to kick out right here, a homolytic bond cleavage right here. And the other part of this bond is going to kick back onto here. So what did I just generate? What did I just generate, right? And actually, the other part of this electron goes back onto the iron. So what I end up with is iron four plus, right? I end up with iron four plus, right? Iron four plus, and I have a bond to the oxygen, right? And it's four plus because this half of this bond, half of the electrons went onto the iron. So five minus one is four. And now this oxygen is bound to this hydrogen, right? But I also have this R with a radical electron, right? There's my radical electron, right? And you may already be guess guess where we're going with this. We're gonna do another another radical mechanism. So what's gonna happen is this electron's gonna come out and it's going to bond homolytically with this electron, but this electron, half of the bond's gonna go back onto the iron. So what do we generate? We regenerate Fe3 plus, and now we have a hydroxylated. R group or a hydroxylated carbon chain. And I hope this mechanism makes sense. So I kind of divide it into two steps. The first part is just single electron transfers. And essentially and, and, and essentially it's activating molecular oxygen. And that sort of takes us that sort of takes us to this point. And then the rest of it really is just, you know, it's just a series of homolytic bond cleavages and radical mechanisms. And what would be an example? What would be an example of this? Well, an example would be something like this. So let me draw it. Let me draw this so you can just get sort of a really good intuitive sense of this, right? So if I have this molecule right here, if I have this molecule, um, let's see. If I have, actually, let me, let me do it like this. Let me do it like this. Let me do this reaction. Actually, no. 
Which reaction am I going to pick? Let me do this one. So if I start with this, right, and I go to this, and actually this is a P450 reaction. This is a P450 reaction that I'm drawing. What I'm essentially doing is I'm going to hydroxylate, I'm going to hydroxylate this position right here. I'm going to hydroxylate right here. And this reaction is the initial reaction catalyzed by aldosterone synthase. This is the initial reaction catalyzed by aldosterone synthase. So let me write that. This is the initial reaction catalyzed by aldosterone aldosterone synthase. The other name for this enzyme is, let's see, this is, um, it's, um, oh yeah, it's 19 hydroxylase, but a lot of times they'll just call it aldosterone synthase. And th this, this group will aldolize, it'll turn to an aldehyde, but initially this is the reaction that happens. So aldosterone synthase is, is a simple, a simple monooxygenase. And actually the R group, if I was to tell you what this R group, assuming that, you know, this was my R group, right? If I was to tell you what the R group is, it would be all this stuff. So the R group is all this, right? And then, of course, I would have a, a, a hydrogen sticking off that would be involved in the radical mechanism. So the R groups can be pretty massive, and they're not necessarily all carbons. They can have ketones and hydroxyl groups sticking off. But ultimately, this is the P450 catalytic cycle, and I hope it made sense. So let's run through it one more time. Iron first, well, well the, the enzyme is first going to bind the carbon chain. And like I mentioned, they're usually long or big carbon chains, right? And then the reductase is going to transfer an electron one at a time to reduce iron to iron 2 plus. And then oxygen is going to, you can essentially think about it undergoing a homolytic bond cleavage, right? And it's going to steal an electron from iron 2 plus to make it iron 3 plus, right? All right. And then the enzyme, redu the reductase, ultimately transfers another electron to make O2 2 plus. And then the oxygen that's distal from the iron picks up two protons and you lose water. And at the same time, and I want to make clear this is at the same time, because you're not going to have oxygen without an octet. So you can sort of think of it as the, ox as the water is leaving, ox this oxygen is stealing electrons from, from iron. So it picks up two electrons and you get O2 minus and iron 5 plus, right? And for, for the sake of the mechanism, we can sort of think about it like this, right? And then you're going to have a, a homolytic bond cleavage between the, the, the R group and a, and a proton, right? And so you're going to get a hydroxyl group bound to the iron, and then the, the actual monooxygenation occurs. And like I mentioned, an example of this an enzyme like this is aldosterone synthase, and in, in fact it is a P450 enzyme. So I hope this video helped you understand the P450 catalytic cycle. Um, in later videos, we'll actually look at um, steroidogenesis and all the reactions of P450s in steroidogenesis and some other various reactions that they do. See you in the next video.